Welcome back to the channel. So I thought I'd do a video for you guys. I'll give you an update on some of the stuff I got going on with the cabin. And uh, I'll show you guys the water system I told you I would make a video on that a while back. So that's what's going to be in today's video. So thanks for tuning in. If you like my content, please like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, let's take a look at what we got new going on with the cabin. So so guys, I was having some problems, well not problems, it wasn't causing anything negative in reference to the wood stove, but I bought the wood stove probably, oh, I don't even remember, it's probably two years ago. I bought the property two and a half years ago and I got the wood stove almost right away, I started looking for one. As soon as I had the idea that I wanted to have something in the in the woods here, a, a cabin in the woods, I found one online super cheap and scooped it up. And uh, so I, I bought it. It was used. And I brought it to site. And hopefully you can see through the window and there's not a reflection, but there's a tent garage right there. And I put the wood stove in that tent garage so it sat in there for two winters the bottom of the tent garage is just bare ground floor and during the winter months the humidity comes up through the ground or moisture comes up through the ground and then because it's a, a dome it condensates on the top on the ceiling and then in the cold temperatures that freezes so then in the spring that all rains down so I did cover the whole wood stove with a, uh, a piece of tie par, but that just coupled with the humidity wasn't enough to keep the stove dry enough that it didn't uh, start to, to pit and rust. So you probably didn't notice it in any of the other videos as I was installing it or, or, or otherwise, but there was a decent amount of rust on the top, a little bit back here. The bottom was the worst. If I go close in like this, you can see all the pitting that happened in the base as I uh, let it sit there and just fester, I guess is a good word for two years. So as you can see now, the stove doesn't look too, too bad. 
I took a uh, metal uh, brush wheel on my drill and I went over the whole thing where all the rust was and cleaned it all up and then uh, I got some high temperature spray paint and I re-spray painted it so now uh, in my opinion it looks uh, pretty stinking good um, at least it's freshened up uh, for sure as you can see the door it's still got some rust I'm not sure how I'd ever be able to get that off uh, I don't think the door is a solid gold brass color um, and I don't want to start putting abrasives on it and trying to polish it uh, and end up wearing off uh, so I mean it's just perfectly fine the way it is it's gonna work great so I'm cool with that uh, so that's one of the projects I was able to complete and then uh, I showed you that I was missing that one handle when I made the cupboard, so that came in. So I put that up, and uh, oh, one of the more bigger things, I uh, I got to apologize to you guys. I, I told you I was going to make you a video about me building the frame for my bed that I was going to put above these stairs. And I didn't make the video, I just did the work. But here, I got this free twin size mattress from my neighbor and uh that has been just fine for the nights that my son has stayed in the cabin with me but uh you'll see all i did was frame a little wall there and there and then inside the wall i built like a header that's a double stud and then here is like a double stud uh, header that goes across to carry the load across the stairwell. That's resting on this double. And then it's just a 16 inch on center framed, all with two by fours and then top with five eighths plywood. Man, this thing is solid. It doesn't move at all. And uh, I really like it. So this right here is the mattress that i'm using for now for when my son stays here and it's it's working just fine but what i've made this for is a twin xl that's why it hangs over here i've made this for a twin xl so about here is where a twin xl will end and i've already bought one i got one used for 150 dollars, like almost brand new i'll show you that once i get it to the camp and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put like a little wall hopefully in cedar i'll put a cross member across in the joists in there so i can put another piece of wood on the wall there and then i'll put i'm thinking a rope between or maybe a couple of ropes or maybe some aircraft cable above the height of the bed to act as a railing but still so that it's not very obstructive because eventually i want to put a tv up there to be able to uh, lay in bed and watch tv without something in your line of sight so yeah there's a couple of things that I've done so far and uh, I'll uh, what else have I done you guys know about all the insulation so in that last video that I did for a cabin update I had lost the footage of how I did the insulation on the underside of the cabin so there's the insulation all completed and you can see I just cut strips of the plastic bags that the insulation comes in and stapled them underneath the floor joists to allow the uh, insulation to stay up. And then eventually, uh, once I, oh, I don't know, once I win the lottery or, uh, or uh, I don't know, my dad used to say when my ship comes in, <laughs> I'll... Uh, buy some plywood and put some plywood up under there to close it so no animals can get in. Let's go downstairs then and I'll start showing you guys the water pump system. So like I showed you in the other video all I did was put a three-quarter plywood top on this I cut a hole in it and I dropped in a single bowl sink. Now I got this uh, from one of the uh, local hardware store the tap I got that for uh, I don't know like $35 regular 140 um, it's a Moen you probably can't see it but uh, 
a nice cheap top, uh, very simple, works just fine. And uh, mounted that on there temporarily. And then I got some inch and a half uh, drain pipe. I put in a P-trap and then drilled a hole right through and in between the floor joists, you can see there's a tick there and a tick there where the floor joists are. So that just goes straight out through the floor. And then there's a hot, uh, actually looking at it, it looks like that's a cold and that's a hot, hot water line. I don't know why I put them backwards like that. They must flip flop up stuff. Oh no, see there it says hot on the, uh, on the uh, little tag on that side. So yeah, definitely put the hot on the left. Anyway, uh, those are just both connected to the same pipe right now. I put a T down underneath and uh, in the future when I figure out what type of water heating system I might put in here or maybe even never, um, I will eventually uh, uh, separate that and then I'll have a hot and a cold at the sink. But since it has the uh, cartridge type valve system, I figured I had to hook up both sides so that there would be no uh, deviation so that there would be no uh, you know weirdness to the, the flow of water coming up so I just put a T in I'll, I'll take you underneath and show you now so guys there's where the water drain comes through the floor and then this smaller pipe here on the right is the cold water line and then there's the hot one over there and then that drain just comes down to a 90 degree elbow and a 45 degree elbow and then just drains out onto the ground and eventually what I'll be able to do is hook up a whole system so that that can connect into my septic but for now, since it's just water from the kitchen sink, that'll be fine. And then those lines, so there's that cold line that comes down right here. And here's the hot one. And as you can see, that just goes over to a T. And then that T goes straight over and comes off of the outtake of the pump. So that is a little half horsepower pump that I got. It's a 120, 230 volt, so I have it in 120 mode. And it comes with the pressure tank already on the bottom. So this type of pump is only good to be able to uh, output, uh, or draw, I should say, from about 25 feet. That's about the deepest you're going to be able to draw from. So let me see... I'll put a, a, a link in the description and maybe even a little splash screen of this pump that I drew, that I bought from Home Depot. And so you guys can check that out if you'd like. And so let me stand up here and I'll see if I can show you and I'll try to explain what this little doohickey here is. Okay, guys, so I've stepped back about two steps from the cabin and I've knelt down. And I'm going to try to show you this and make it understandable. So I'm going to try to hold the camera level. And so if you look through the bush right there, that is the top of the water tank. No, that's the wrong thing. Can't even see it. Okay, sorry, that's, where's my finger? That's not the water tank, that's just a 50 gallon drum sitting in the bush. That white, right there, underneath this piece of wood, there's some white right at the top of this plant. That white is my water tank. And so if I go on a level plane, try to hold it as level as I can, it looks to me like that height is above the height of this water pump, but it's not. It's below it. So when I hooked the hoses up to the water pump and opened the valve, I had the, the water 
feed line laying on the ground up here. And I expected to walk up here and see water flowing out the end of it, and I didn't. So that told me that the end of this pipe, or at least some length of the pipe along the way through the bush, is above the height of the water line in the, um, in the uh, tank. So, I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to get this pump to prime. Because I knew with the water line below the height of the end of the pipe, if I poured water in the pipe like you would do for a well, then the water would just flow in and raise the level in the tank and I wouldn't be gaining anything really. Or I'd have to put in a lot of water. I wasn't just filling up the hose. So that's what that little thing right at the, right where the intake is, is for. That is a backflow valve. So what I did to be able to prime the pump was I went down to the water, I hooked up my Milwaukee 12 or 18 volt transfer pump at the water, which has got to be 40 feet below this height, and cranked it on. And then I closed all the valves, the one going to the trailer and the one that goes into the tank, and pushed the water all the way up here into the pump. And then with that black flow valve, when I turned the Milwaukee pump off, the water stayed in the line. And then I had a primed system. And then so you can see the power that goes into the, the pump, feeds it. And that is just a 20 amp circuit that comes right off my panel and just runs along underneath the bottom of the cabin. So the water line that I used is a polyethylene farm grade three quarter inch pipe. And that pipe snakes all along through here. It's uh, 30 meters worth, so 100 feet. And it goes all the way along through the bush and down the hill over to the tank. So let's go down over to the tank and I'll show you the connection that I made down there. So guys, here is where I brought the water down up and connected it into the tank. I just uh, brought the water line up here. I put a shut off valve here and this was the existing connection. And so there's a valve up there on the tank. I just cut this pipe, put a T in and then I closed that valve and left this valve open, or yeah, open, that valve open, and then I closed the valve over on the trailer, turned my pump on, and that forced the water to go through the line all the way up the hill, and that's what uh, allowed me to get that pump primed up there. So yeah, pretty simple system. It works really good. I can run the sink for about probably three, maybe four minutes with that small pressure tank before the pump needs to turn back on and it runs just fine right off my solar system. So I'm pretty happy with it. And I just remembered on the way down here, I have one more thing I'd like to show you guys. So let me walk back up to the cabin and I'll show you that. Oh yeah, I forgot about this too. I was talking to a guy the other day, and I know I needed some wood for this winter. I was able to get three cord of maple hardwood for the uh, cabin wood stove for a hundred bucks a cord, which is a really good price in my area. So yeah, good solid wood. It's not quite dry, but you can see some of it's starting to check up. So I think it'll do good for this year and next year it'll be perfect. So. That was the second of the of the one thing I wanted to show you. The other thing, I gotta go get the parts. I'll take them up to the cabin and set them out and I'll show you I'm pretty proud of my son for this one. Okay, so here we are back up at the cabin and you guys might remember if you've been watching the channel all along, last year while I was standing up the walls on the second floor, my son was on the bottom floor building himself a birdhouse. And
Could you imagine that back in the day they used to build a whole house with one of those? It's crazy. What? It's crazy. It can't even cut this piece of wood. We'll make a birdhouse. Birdhouse? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And I was busy doing the cabin and uh, I told you guys that I was going to do a video about it, but I never did. And, uh, well, I was busy and I didn't really have time to work with them or help them. But uh, my only contribu con contribution to it was the uh, tie par uh, on the roof so that it would hold out water just a little bit better. But anyway, on his own, this is what my 11 year old son came up with. He just took a bunch of scrap pieces of wood and put them together and made a birdhouse with a front step and everything that I thought was really ingenuitive of him at that age to uh, put together something like that and being inspired by his dad was really cool. So two weeks ago, me and him were able to come back up here together just for a relaxed week together. And we had a super awesome time. And so what I did was I took the time and I actually put together with him Birdhouse 2.0, which uh, is uh, this new birdhouse here. And uh, he was super jacked about the process. Uh, he didn't want to make a video about it. He's... Uh, I guess he was 12 at the time, because he's 13 now. Anyway, superstar dad at, the, at his best right here. But here's uh, Birdhouse 2.0. I just got the plans off the internet, and uh, that's what she looks like right there. So I got some cedar shakes. I think I'll put some cedar shakes on the roof, uh, sexify it up a little bit. And then, I don't know, maybe I'll put a little piece of trim around here to make the front nice cool and then I'm gonna let them stain it with the leftover stain from the kitchen cupboards so yeah that's I think everything that I wanted to show you guys uh, I appreciate you watching the video thanks for tuning in uh, I hope you guys all have a great week and uh, tune in next time for another video on independent off-grid retreat I'm not sure yet what we're doing I've just been trying to relax the end of the summer and enjoy more of it as I worked so hard through last summer. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys. See you all soon.